Andrea, it's so lovely to have you to join us today. Thank you so much for spending time with us. Can you just tell us a bit about your background and how you came to be a classical homeopath? Thank you for inviting me. Um, my name is Andrea Adel. I'm working as a classical homeopath. I have practices in uh, Bath and in Lugia. Um, I have been with homeopathy since four generations, I could say. My great-grandmother used homeopathy and it has run through the whole family. Um, my brother is a homeopath in Germany, has a homeopathy school, so basically I grew up with it and I'm very familiar with it. In 2002 I wondered whether it's time to go professional, so I studied in 2005 and have set up my own clinics now. Um, why am I passionate? Uh, homeopathy is a fantastic alternative to conventional medicine. I'm not against conventional medicine, but it has alternatives. There are alternatives, particularly if we um, are on long-term prescription. Very often we, I see chronic patients who um, have been for a long time on medical prescriptions and would like to come off or reduce those, and there is a possibility with homeopathy. Dr. Samuel Hahnemann was a medical doctor about 250 years ago m and practicing was very dissatisfied, uh, dis dissatisfied with the results of medicine in his days and turned his back to uh, the normal medicine. He then discovered homeopathy by sheer accident basically um, and started practicing it and over the time of Good over 200 years, it has stood the test of time. Homeopathy has been applied many, in many countries successfully. Um, it goes back as far as uh, Hippocrates, Hippocrate in the old Greek times, who said for every disease and every illness there is a treatment. And very often you find the treatment by treating like with like. The, the main difference is really um, homeopathy is a holistic form of medicine. So we, we take into consideration the person as a whole on the mental, emotional and physical level. Uh, the symptoms which we see in a case which presents are an expression of the defense organism of our immune system, which tries to overcome a state of disease or illness. And uh, if you find then the corresponding remedy, which, which would cover those symptoms, say we have a tonsillitis with fever and headache and, and sweating, and we find a remedy which would produce exactly the same and it fits like a glove, then, and, and we prescribe this remedy, then we support the immune system in its attempt to heal itself. Our best doctor is the doctor built in ourselves. A healthy, strong immune system will always uh, help you overcome disease. Um, conventional medicine very often addresses the symptoms alone and masks the symptoms. A very simple by, uh, example would be if you are su suffering of sleeplessness and taking a sleeping tablet, the sleeping tablet will send us to sleep, surely. But as soon as the drug wears off, the sleeplessness returns. If I do the same with a homeopathic remedy, um, the organism will change through the impetus which it gets through the uh, homeopathic remedy and the sleeplessness will just disappear eventually. Not really. Homeopathy is a very safe and gentle uh, form of medicine because it is, uh, we are working with very highly diluted remedies. They are non-toxic, non-addictive and uh, can be easily given to babies and the, the age range is really from early to very high age. And the beauty of homeopathic medicine is it can be prescribed alongside uh, conventional medication. So if someone, say, is on heart medication or anything else, the homeopathic remedy will not counteract or interfere with the, with the, com with the conventional medication. Any first case taking will take about 90 minutes in which I will try to analyze the complete holistic picture of the patient looking for, for help. So I'm looking, as I said before, to the mental, emotional, physical planes. 
I look at the existing system picture of the disturbance or condition or illness which is presented, but I look as well as mod to modalities and, and your personality. So is it someone who is chilly in himself or actually quite, quite warm-blooded? Is it someone who is who likes company and, and, and or, or someone who is very happy in himself. So we look at the whole spectrum of, of the personality, on the, the makeup, and I collect all these little uh, pieces of information. They are like a puzzle and they fit them together to a picture. And this picture has to correspond to the remedy prescribed. So are we looking at reserved people, at open people, slow or fast, same with the metabolism, we, we look at the whole person. Which fits perfectly with the work that I do with behavioural profiling. Yes. And it's very interesting to see how all, all this is interlinked. Absolutely amazing. And when I do presentations, I also talk about Hippocrates in 400 yes. BC, yes. how he created the link between personality and behaviour and health. And so none of this is rocket science, none of this is new quackery nonsense that some people think no. it is. No, it, uh, we, we know, and even the medical science knows about it, that we have links between mental, emotional well-being and illness. If you are under stress over long term, we, we can become ill. If you have griefs, whatever the reason of the grief may, may be, we become, un we, what we call normally, we are under the weather, we are more susceptible to become ill. So we, we can then develop an acute illness. An acute illness is usually an illness which can come and go on its own, compared to chronic illness, which are long-standing recurrent uh, diseases or conditions. So say if someone has a, a cystitis once every year or even then more often, this then turns slowly into a, con a chronic condition which needs a different treatment than an acute, which only happens once and has never been there before. The beauty in, in, in acute cases is you see very quickly the reaction, much quicker than in a chronic state. And um, I always um, like to think about my own son, um, the typical case of earache, violent throbbing earache with very high fever, um, the normal picture, restlessness, crying, and um, instead of taking going down the drug route, which would normally uh, recommend Calpol, we know now that the National Institute of Clinical Excellence, NICE, recommended to reduce the use of Calpol, and homeopathy is a fantastic alternative. You find the correct remedy, in this case it was a belladonna case, he was throbbing, he was hot, you touched his face, you didn't even have to touch it, you could have uh, feel the radiating heat. He was glistening, had glistening eyes, he was restless. And the pain came in waves, it came and went in waves. So the remedy was indicated, I gave the remedy, and about 10 minutes later he was asleep. Woke up an hour and a half later and felt considerably better. So the sleep, which is a fantastic healer, had kicked in through the remedy the body was able to, to sort itself out. And I asked him, he said, you know, it's still, yes, it was a bit hurting, but he was much better. And within a day or two, he was back to normal. The recovery rate is much quicker. This is in an acute. So in an acute, we see immediate reaction compared to chronic disease, where the treatment might take sometimes months. It depends how long the condition has been existent. If you see, if you look at a case where you had, uh, I don't know, asthma since childhood and you look at an adult, so this won't be, this or the problem won't be solved over, over four weeks. It will be months careful uh, prescribing, but the results speak for themselves. So you, you can actually help in those cases as well. And then reduce the medication. This is the fantastic benefit of homeopathy. So you're talking about looking at um, people who would like to reduce their reliance upon yes. allopathic drugs yes. and um, use more natural yes. remedies. Um, but also it's about being aware of our own body and how we can use homeopathy to complement anything else that we're doing in our lives. Absolutely, yeah. and we strengthen our immune system that way. And you know, sometimes I see clients coming to me who say, I'm, I, the doctor prescribed me this and that uh, drug, I can't cope with a drug, it has too many side effects, I would like to come off. 
And, and then through, as I said, careful prescribing and monitoring, you can see the movement. And I have seen many cases where actually patients could stop using the drug in accordance with their GP. So I'm, I never would uh, recommend someone coming off his prescription drugs or stopping them himself. I always recommend to go back to the GP and, and you know, you have the normal elaborate boards, whether it's blood tests, whether it's blood pressure, whatever the case is. And you, um, you see how the body improves, the values improve, and then the, the prescription can be reduced. Excellent, excellent. We have a number of cases where um, using proarginine, which is a supplement to mm. help um, clear the arterial system, mm. where clients have been on statins and high blood Absolutely. pressure medication, yeah. and they've come off totally. We obviously can't recommend they do that, but we have so many cases, they can't all be wrong, can they? No. Um, where they come up. Come and the interesting thing is, even if you have someone, even if you treat someone over a longer period of time with a long, chronic, chronic fatigue syndrome, is for instance one of these examples, the patient won't be better within a fortnight, as I said before. However, they will feel the improvement. The patient will report back after a few weeks and say, actually, I feel calmer in myself. Um, I have more self-confidence because often with chronic fati uh, fatigue syndrome, we see the loss of self-confidence. People aren't able to work anymore. Mm. They, they, there's a real stigma attached to it. And uh, they just start doing little things. They start sorting things out. They, they, they start um, some work or some hobbies again, very, very slowly, step by step. But it enables them to return to normal life. That was, that was a case where a lady contacted me once. She had, had used homeopathy herself on and off, with, on herself and her animals. So she was convinced it worked. And, um, she rang one of the pharmaceutical, uh, the, the homeopathic pharmacies and said, can you send me something for my thyroid? I have an underfunction of the thyroid. And they said, well, it's time you see a pro uh, professional homeopath because it goes into the endocrine system. We have problems here. Just sending you something over the counter, you need to see a professional. So she came. I took the case. It is always the same procedure. You take the case, you look at the patient as a whole. And I, I saw a picture of a remedy. I prescribed this remedy and within, again, this was a process over three months, she had to go back for her next lab test with her doctor who had said, okay, I let you off the, the prescription dr drug because she had so severe side effects. We will see how you do and, and then we look in, into alternatives, medical uh, alternatives. Within three months after one remedy and one dose of the remedy, her values started getting better. The thyroid values became better. Um, the GP very kindly said, go on and do what you're doing. It seems to be working. And to make a long story uh, short, a year later, after several tests and still the same remedy, I think we repeated it two or three times at all, if at all. Uh, she, she rang me and she said, I, you will be pleased to hear my, my GP said um, you defeated medicine on two accounts. A, you are one of the very few patients who has problems with thyroxine. Usually people feel better. You didn't. And your thyroid values are in improving, still improving, and I'm happy with, with what you're doing. Amazing. The power of homeopathy. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Andrea. Thank you very much for asking. Thank you.